Hey, Pekin here, and welcome to a bit of a different video. Um, if you didn't know, I wrote a book uh, a while ago, and I'm currently working on the second one and had a bit of a snag with some writer's block, and I figured that the best way to get over that would be to revisit who my characters are and what defines them and, and keeps them separate from each other. It would, it would help the story kind of flow better. So I wanted to take this personality test from the viewpoint of each of the main characters uh, as well as a few other ones. So I have some notes here and I'm going to go in order of the notes. I wrote these at like 3 in the morning this morning. I have not slept, but that's fine. But anyway, if you want to read the book, uh, there will be minor spoilers for this, not really in terms of plot, but more in terms of like who these characters are. So if you want to meet them naturally, go ahead and get the book in the description below. It's on Amazon. Um, you can get it hard copy, soft, soft copy, paperback, or uh, the ebook, which is the cheapest. Anyway, I don't know how accurate this personality test is, but we're going to get right into it. We're going to start with Luke. Um, who honestly I owe so much of Luke's character to the lovely last Lyra who portrayed him in the unfinished audio series I was doing um, honestly she did so fucking good with <laughs> the character and a lot of a lot of his uh, personality traits and like outgoing nature is ideas that Lyra had so we're gonna start with him I guess Honestly, Luke kind of strikes me as a morning person. Because he's so fucking upbeat all the time. These are very random. I, these really do help fill out your character, though. He's got long legs. I think he'd walk fast with long steps. Uh, when you speak to people, you tend to stand with your arms folded. I, mean, I don't know. It depends on who Luke is talking to. He's not very physically affectionate, and he doesn't trust uh, people very quickly. I'd say he'd probably have his hands on his hips because he likes to betray power. Um, when you're relaxed, you usually sit with your knees bent, your legs neatly side to side. What does that mean? Honestly, Luke probably manspreads. Yeah, I think that's what this is. Like, having just, like, your knees up and your fucking... I'm sitting cross-legged right now, but having your feet on the ground. We'll go with a laugh, not a loud one, because he's usually the one making a joke. Uh, and if he's laughing at his own joke, he'd probably be like, <laughs> "Never party a social gathering, you tend to make a loud entrance so that everybody notices you." I'm gonna say of these three options, he probably makes the loudest entrance. Welcome to break. Feel extremely irritated. There is a scene in the book where he's focusing on a task and someone interrupts him. And he's just kind of like, ah, oh, man, all right, whatever. And he'll go back to what he's doing. So uh, probably between the two, favorite color is red. Before you fall asleep, you're usually lying. He never lies. <laughs> um, I don't know. This one's not really helpful. If you've read the book, you know why. But he can't really sleep on his back. He's the kind of guy who would have his fucking hands behind his head and be like, ah. So I'd, I'd probably say that. When you dream, you're often... Luke gives me the vibe of someone who doesn't really dream that often. But when he does dream, he would be fighting or struggling. I'm gonna go with dreamless sleep. Because his, his struggles aren't really shown too much. The lively center of attention. That's... Fitting. Others see who's fresh, lively, charming, amusing, practical, and always interesting. Someone who's constantly in the center of attention. I wouldn't say that. He's more like the the that one friend who knows he's not the handsome one, so he's just kind of smart and funny that way. Also see you as kind, considerate, and understanding. That's someone who always cheer them up, help them out. Maybe. He's not very good with people that way. But yeah, that's, that's a good start. What I wrote for Luke is he's an outgoing goofball that likes to keep the peace and throw a dirty joke in now and again. I don't. I wrote this at three in the morning, so if it has like shitty grammar, I'm so sorry. 
Eager to prove himself and usually holds his own rather well as a result of his rigorous training and self-control. All right, we're going to go to Era, Probably my favorite character to write on her own. Yeah, Era is probably my favorite character just to write on her own because she has so much going on in her fucking brain. I feel most energetic and focused. She is... Not exactly a night owl, but I'd say the afternoon. Even though... She doesn't really have that concept of time. If you know, you know. When I walk, I tend to do it. She'd be a slow walker, I think. Unless she's, like, pissed off about something. Less fast head up looking the world in the face. When you speak to people, you tend to... Oh, she always has her fucking arms folded. Era is based off my sister when she was a little bit younger. Kind of now still, actually. Um, she's she's very powerful, I guess is the word for it. When you're relaxed, you usually sit. She sits with her legs out. Like, fucking leaned back. <clears throat> when you find something really funny, you usually give... Uh, a quiet chuckle. When you enter a party or social gathering, you... She wouldn't be at a social gathering. <laughs> um... Mm -mm. Because if it was a social gathering, she would make a quiet entrance. Not because, like, she's like, oh god, I don't know anybody. She would just, like, appear, like a middle child. But... There is a scene in the book where she does, like, be like, Ah! Buenos dias! Like, says hello to everybody. Um. I'm gonna say she would make a quiet entrance and then have people, like, look for the people she knows. She would be very irritated if she was, if she was actually focused on something, she'd be like, dude, I was focused for the first time ever, and you're fucking me on this? Um, favorite color? I don't know her favorite color, but I know the color I always associate with her with is green. Before you fall asleep, you usually stretch out on your back. There is a scene where she sleeps in the second book that I'm working on. Um, and she would... She would be laying, like, a fucking bug, like, curled up around herself. On the side, slightly curled. There's not really a good one. Not with your head under the covers. She's not a sociopath. <laughs> I'm gonna say with a head on one arm, because that kind of conveys the most, like... you fucking sleeping. When you dream, you're often... fighting Aaron never has fucking good dreams the loyal friend what others see you as sensible cautious careful and practical they see you as clever gifted or talented voice crack sorry but modest not a person who makes friends too quickly or easily but someone who's extremely loyal to friends you do make and who expects the same royalty royalty loyalty in return those who really get to know you realize it takes a lot to shake your trust in your friends, but equally that it takes you a long time to get over if that trust is ever broken. That's accurate. That last bit about trust is very accurate. What I wrote for her, she's... Oh, I almost read the wrong one. She's a straight-edged, soldier-like woman with a sarcastic sense of humor, often headstrong and ruled by emotion. Deep-rooted trauma leaves her unable to understand people most times, but she makes up for it with a patient yet authoritative manner. A natural leader, though she doesn't know it. Yeah, I, I thought she'd get the natural leader one, but this is fine. <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little bit sick, right? I don't. You can probably tell with how fucking deep my voice is right now. Okay, uh, next one we're doing is Evie, my other favorite to write. I fucking love Evie. I feel like I need to give thanks and credit to someone else for this character. Uh, Evie's, a lot of Evie's backstory and, and personality was uh, put together 
in part by the amazing woman that portrayed her in the audio series. Uh, she goes by Pixie online and she has been such a wonderful help in not only helping to write that and voice acting in that, but in being like a go-to of mine to be like, Hey, does this make sense for this character to, to think this way? Um, is this how they do it in London? Would her accent be like this? Would she use these slang words or, or is that not accurate? The essays, the, the, the paragraphs and paragraphs we have sent back and forth to each other, uh, talking about these, this character's motivations. It's so much. And Pixie, if you're watching this, you are incredible. Thank you so much. I don't know why you put up with my dumbass asking you for your opinions on everything but thank you so much i feel most energetic and focused she's a morning person she can deny all she fucking wants she oh come back camera 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 come back to me camera camera come back to me thank you she can deny all she wants but she's a fucking morning person and she's an asshole about it uh, she, she walks, she has like kind of long legs, but she's, how tall is she actually? I forgot. Yeah. If you guys want to read a book where absolutely every single itty bitty detail is way too thought out for its own good, you should read this one because I have a list of the character's heights, what they smell like, <laughs> what random quirks they have, where is... Even characters that aren't going to be introduced for fucking years. Alright, Evie. Evie is 5'8", she's my height. She would probably have her head down, but she would be walking fast. She doesn't like to dwell anywhere, she likes to just go. When you speak to people, you tend to stand with your arms folded, have your hands clasped. Depends on who she's talking to. If she's talking to uh, you-know-who, she'll probably have her, her arms folded or her hands clasped. If she's talking to the other you-know-who, she's probably like, mm, all touchy and shit. Um... If she's talking to just anybody, though, she would probably also have her hands on her hips. She likes to pretend that she's fucking big and powerful. When you relax, you usually sit with one leg curled up. I think the most accurate would be one leg curled under you, if not both legs crossed. Um, if she's trying to be, like, an ass, which is often, she would put her legs, like, on, on the desk. I'd say if she was sitting normally, she would have one leg curled under her. What do you have? What? No, not the turkey! No, no, hey! My cat was running around with this in his mouth. When you find something really funny, you usually give, ooh... Okay, she would not sm she would not laugh about much of anything unless it was said by one particular character. So I'm going to say a sheepish smile, if anything. Like she would she would like glare. When you enter a part when you enter when you enter a party or gathering, you tend to she would be fucking quiet as hell. Mm. She'd be quiet until people noticed her. And then she'd be like, yeah, I'm here, you know? And then she'd go back to her fucking fake ass outgoing personality. <sighs> this is hard. I feel like there's not enough options. I'm going to say she'd make a quiet entrance. She's very cat-like in that she would just kind of show up somewhere. If you're focused on a task and interrupted, you would be... She doesn't focus on tasks, tasks very often. <laughs> I'm trying to think if she ever actually was interrupted in doing something. 
Again, this really depends on the person. I feel like with her one person that she likes, she would welcome the break. But everybody else, she'd be the exact opposite. So I'll say a very between those two extremes. <laughs> Favorite color is uh, pink. Why is that not an option? What the shit? Then again, her favorite color only became pink, like, m in between book one and two. She didn't really have one before, because she didn't really think about it. I'd say dark blue and purple, because she wears a lot of dark blue. She does not like red. Uh, before you fall asleep, you're usually lying. Honestly, she would probably have her head under the covers. When you dream, you're often probably falling out of out of all of these like she's not gonna be having any good dreams but she's not really searching for anyone she's at least in the first book she's just falling the loyal friend again she is not no i don't like this this test is dumb others see you as sensible cautious careful and practical they see you as clever gifted or talented but modest that's bullshit there's that okay this is the first one I, I completely disagree with so i'm gonna read out what i wrote evie an unruly and bratty yet outgoing young woman a fake arrogant persona she puts forth to keep in control often contrasts with the quiet thoughtful demeanor of her true self scars riddling her body can be used to project grit and power or convey her pain and sensitivity well said me I don't remember writing that. <laughs> I was really tired last night. Next one is going to be Ensley, the mother. I feel most energetic and fo she's a morning person. All moms are morning people and she was a soldier. So when she walks, it's fast with long steps. Speak to people. I'm going to say arms folded. If not, she'd have them, like, down, because she still has that muscle memory. Um, when you're relaxed, you sit with your legs straight. When you find something really funny, you usually give a... Not big. It would be appreciative, though. She'd be like... <laughs> uh, and she loves a good dad joke. That's not important here, but still. When you enter a party... I don't like this question because Ensley wouldn't go to a party for one, but she wouldn't make a big deal about it. She would show up and she'd say hello to anybody there, but yeah, she would just kind of show up. I'll do this. If she was at a party or a social gathering, she would only be there because one of her adopted daughters asked her to come and in that she would be quiet and be like i don't really know what i'm doing here but she would go to where one of her daughters was. If you're focused on a task and interrupted you welcome the break she hasn't been a soldier for a long time so when she's interrupted in her work she's like okay i can take a break Favorite color? Honestly, I'm going to say that her favorite color is red. Yeah, I'm going to say her favorite color is red. Before you fall asleep, you're usually lying. She would... She would lay on her back in, like, that military way of just, like, perfectly straight all the time. That was gross. I am so sorry you had to see that. When you dream, you're also often. This one's a stupid question, too. Your dreams are not always pleasant. Your dreams are not. No, Toast! He is growling at me right now because I tried to take the turkey from him. Why are you growling at me, punk? Here, you can have the turkey. I'm going to say she usually has a dreamless sleep. Lively center of attention? This is utter shit! Others see you as fresh, charming, amusing, practical, and always interesting. Someone who's constantly in the center of attention. This is bullshit! 
This is bullshit! Ensley, rule abiding to a fault. A respectful and nurturing mother figure to not just her two daughters, but most people around her. A fan of the occasional dad joke. A fierce mama bear if her adopted children are in danger. She is a Mary Sue if I've ever seen one. Alright, next one we're doing is Amy, who I relate to the most at this current time, uh, at least in book two. <laughs> Feel most energetic and focused. Hmm. Neither Amy or James, her brother, are morning people. But they're not really night owls either, so I'll say afternoon. When I walk, I tend to do it. Amy's a little bit shorter, isn't she? I also have this written down. Hold on. Amy is 5'6". I never wanted her to be like this super thin, like, oh, she's an actress in a movie, so she has to be thin. I don't like that. I imagine, um, what's her name? Emma from Bates Motel, but like, maybe a little chubbier. Who knows? But she would probably walk fast. No, she doesn't really have a care in the world in the first place. I'd say less fast, but head up. Uh, no. This one's hard. This test is stupid. I don't like it. When you speak to people, you tend to... She doesn't talk to people very often. I'd say she touches or per pushes the person with whom she's talking um yeah that, that that's pretty accurate like if james said some dumb shit she'd be like shut the fuck anyway when you relax you usually sit with your legs crossed when you find something really funny you usually give a laugh but not a loud one when you enter a party or social gathering you tend to not even be there so make the quietest entrance and then not be noticed at all if you're focused on a task, really, she would not, probably has not ever been to a social gathering of any kind. Like, maybe an after-school event or something, but other than that, no. If you're focused on a task and you're interrupted, you're likely to welcome the break. She still doesn't really have a care in the world. Her favorite color... By the end of the first book, her favorite color is red. I'd say in the beginning is pink, but there's no pink. I'll go with dark blue or purple. Is the closest to pink there. Before you fall asleep, usually lying. Why does Amy give me vibes of someone who sleeps face down? I'm gonna say on her side. When you dream, you're often... At least in the first book, her dreams are always pleasant. The loyal friend. What the shit? Gifted or talented? She's clever. Gifted and talented, I don't know. She hasn't really done much with her life. Not a person who makes friends too quickly or easily. That's accurate. She has had two friends her entire life. At least until the beginning of book one. But someone who's extremely loyal to friends you do make and expects the same loyalty in return. Yeah. Those who really get to know you realize it takes a lot to shake your trust. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is fairly accurate. It's kind of like a oversimplification of her character. Because all of this is true, but there's so much more. Okay. Now what I wrote, Amy. A bubbly yet soft-spoken hopeless romantic. Nervous around large groups of people, or just people in general, but open with the ones she loves. A people pleaser through and through. She imitates her brother's hot-headedness from time to time, as he is the only role model she's ever had. And I made a spelling mistake in this. <laughs> Alright, next one we're doing is my boy James, who, when he first uh, was... When I first started writing... Oh god. When I first started writing, James was like a self-insert but he was everything I wish I could be. Now he's an asshole. Uh, he is not a morning person. When I walk, I tend to... He... Kind of a lazy dude. 
he would be looking the world in the face, not in a like what kind of way, but he'd be like, he'd be the kind of guy that walks like this down the halls and hits everybody with his fucking elbows. When you speak to people, you tend to. Probably have his arms full. When you relax, you usually sit. He'd also probably have his legs crossed. He's got that legs crossed autism. When you find something really funny, you usually. He laughs loud. I'm sure he does. When you enter a party or social gathering, you tend to make a loud entrance because he's an asshole. If you focus on a task and you're interrupted, you're likely to. I don't know, he's kind of, like, hot-headed. I'm gonna say in between, because sometimes he'd be like, hell yeah, let's take a break. His favorite color is orange, because he's basic as shit. When you fall asleep, you're usually lying. I'm gonna say with your head on one arm, because that is the closest to, like, holding on to something, I guess. Because he would, he would probably be hugging a pillow. Amy would probably be hugging a pillow as well. <laughs> when you dream, you're often... Literally, the book begins with his with a dream of his, and it's... I'd say that dream is more searching. The lively center of attention. That's kind of accurate. Others see you as fresh, lively, and charming. He is charming. Uh, and always interesting. I'm getting a call from Pennsylvania. Someone who's constantly in center of attention, but sufficiently well balanced not to let it. Nope. He it goes straight to his head. He knows he's the center of attention. He's hot and he knows it. They also see you as kind, considerate, and understanding. Mm -hmm. Little detail that's not really brought up a ton in the book, but James and Amy live in a big ass house and haven't like struggled. Um, they're not rich. Because they don't have money of their own, and their mom doesn't, like, give them money. All the money they get, they, like, earn from other things, or they, like, take out of their mom's purse or something. Like, they- the family has money, but it doesn't translate to them having money. What I wrote for James is arrogant and sarcastic, often hot-headed when it comes to defending the honor of Amy or Liz, but rational otherwise. Hasn't lost a fight, and he knows it. He grew up feeling like he needed to be a man and protect his loved ones, and as a result, is often tired or troubled. Anyway, next one we're doing is Liz. When I was writing the first book, she was based off of someone I was with, and uh, that person ended up being like really shitty. So now I I really struggle with writing Liz. <laughs> so I feel like this this part's important. Liz needs to be. Um, flushed out a little bit, but she's she's a morning person. Um, which is funny because she's always around James and Amy, who are like, no, I don't want to wake up in the morning. Um, she's short, I think. She's five six. She's the same height as Amy. Fairly fast with small stuff. Yeah, that that, that works. When you speak to people, you tend to... Ugh, this one's hard. Because she only ever talks to James and Amy. But if she were talking to, like, a stranger, she'd probably, like, be super shy. Or if she was talking to her, her parents, her hands would be clasped in front of her. But if she was talking to James, she'd be very physical. You know what? She'd probably be fucking with her. She she she's like me. She'd be like messing with her hair, like tucking it behind her ear, messing with her chin, messing with her beard. When you're relaxed, you usually sit one leg curled under her. She doesn't relax very often. Uh, when she, when funny, when funny, she is quiet. A little quiet laugh. When you enter a party. She would not fucking be there. She would look for James immediately. Or Amy. Focus on a task and you're interrupted. She would welcome the break. Her favorite color is also pink. How many fucking characters' favorite color is pink? Okay, hear me out. 
she likes 21 pilots yes i wrote that down and this the book uh happens in 2016 what album <laughs> of 21 pilots was out in 2016 all right trench came out in 2018 so her favorite color is red her hair is red uh, and this is good because she likes James, and James always wears orange, um, so that works. But the the album she would know from Twenty One Pilots is Blurry Face. It's don't judge me, all right? My characters like music. Uh, okay, before you fall asleep, you're usually lying. One of these two. I'd say with her head under the covers. When you dream, you're often fighting or struggling. Abuse does that to you. Loyal friend! Why do I- <coughs> Why do I keep getting loyal friend? Anyway, we're gonna read Liz's entry. A, shall we say, spicy girl who often comes across as bitter or uptight to strangers, but is much sweeter to her two companions. She's been with James and Amy for so long that she doesn't have much of a life outside of them. She is a powerful force of grit and persistence, and an expert at reading people's emotions quickly. Uh, she grew up in a very abusive household, so she has to she has to like know just by looking at you what you're thinking to keep from getting beat. This next character literally appears in close to the end of the book, but I feel like they're very important anyway. Their name is Noah. Uh, they are a night owl through and through. How would they walk? They're tall as shit, if I remember correctly. Okay. Noah Anzel is 6'3". <laughs> um, I'm going to say fast with long steps. They would have their arms folded. Or be fucking with their hair. When you relax, you usually sit with... I'm gonna say legs crossed just because they'd be trying to take up as little space as possible. When you find something funny, it would be a quiet chuckle. They're shy. When you enter a party or social gathering, you look for someone you know. Every character in this book is a shy little shit that's like, I don't want to be at this social gathering. Why Why do you keep making my characters go to social gatherings? They don't like people. If you're focused on a task and you're interrupted, uh, it would be a very... Because like, even if they were irritated, they would try like hell to not show it. Favorite color is black. Where you fall asleep, you're usually lying... Say stretched out on back, because they they always sleep with their uh, their girlfriend slash wife. When you dream, you're often I'm gonna say dreamless. They have like issues, but a natural leader. I mean, yeah, but no. Deeply closed off, quiet and rational. Reading and rereading old literature has shifted their vocabulary to make use of Shakespearean language. A deep voice that could have grown in shape to be a commanding one has instead been honed to be soothing for when they read Yui her favorite stories. And Yui is also who we're doing next. And I think this is the last one for the video. I have more, but they're not really important uh, to the story. They're important to the second book, not the first. <clears throat> Yui is a morning person through and through. Uh, fast with small steps. Yui's short, if I remember correctly. Uh, Yui. <clears throat> Yui has her hands on her hips. When you relax, you usually sit with one leg curled under you. Yeah, Yui's the kind of person who would have, like, one leg curled under them, and then the other would be, like, furiously tapping or bouncing her foot. When you find something really funny, you usually give a laugh but not a loud one. I don't know, she's a little bit too serious for that. But then again, she's kind of bubbly sometimes. 
When you enter a party or social gathering, you tend to... I guess of these options, she would make the loudest entrance. But she would always be there with Noah. And she knows that Noah doesn't like the attention on them. So... She'd probably try and make a very quiet entrance. Just so nobody notices Noah. If you focus on a task and you're interrupted, you're likely to vary between irritated and accepting a break. She likes yellow and blue. She likes yellow. I don't know why they pair these two together, but she likes yellow. Where you fall asleep, you're usually lying. This really doesn't account for couples, does it? I'd say on her side while Noah lays flat on their back. You dream, you're often flying or float. The loyal friend! What the fuck? Okay, this is this is this is dumb. This is dumb. <laughs> I've only gotten the loyal friend and the lively center of attention and the natural leader once. Okay. Fiery go-getter who always stands up for what she knows to be right. Endlessly patient with Noah and always outgoing to new people. Forgiving, but not a doormat. Independent, but always wants Noah around. This was an interesting video. I'm going to go write a ton now and probably edit this video way later than I should. But if you like this video and you're really curious about what the book is about, once again, go buy it. Uh, I put a lot of work into it. Um, I'm going to release like a second version of it when I release the second book. Just because I get better at writing every day and I have the luxury of not being held down by like uh, publishers or anything. I can just do whatever I want. So a second version of it. That'll be the same story, it'll just be like better written and more information, if that makes sense. And the second book will come out around the same time. There is no timeline for that yet because I'm nowhere close to done with it. But if you're interested in that kind of thing, subscribe and I'll probably update this. I'll probably update you on this channel. If not, in the description below is a Twitter account that is linked directly to uh, information about the books. So if you're interested in that, go follow me there. Or in the description, there's also a Discord where I talk about everything. So, yeah. Anyway, see you guys later.